Good morning. Welcome to Making Stuff with Chris Dayhut. Today we're going to talk about tools. And uh, in this case, tools very specific to helping uh, with programming and uh, being more efficient uh, and organized as you go through and develop a program or a project, uh, such as in the case of the Zoomtown experiment behind me here. Uh, being organized and gathering up data really uh, helps immensely with uh, progressing through a project. This project, the Zoomtown experiment, has been going on for about a year and two or three months right now. And it's gone through a lot of changes. Overall, it's an experiment. Uh, change is expected to develop the process that we're trying to achieve with it. But along the way, if you don't keep track of what you've done or things that you need to keep track of, such as things to do, projects like this can be a nightmare to deal with. Worse yet, if your memory isn't very good anymore, you need to rely on to-do lists and notes to help you uh, find that information. And all along, uh, for as long as I can remember, I used to do written journals in a spiral-bound notebook. That was great. I would do uh, uh, different spreadsheets, different documents, different forms of documents, and my, my information would be all over the place. Uh, that was not conducive to being efficient. And for me right now, where I go into this project for maybe a month or two months, and then I might be away for a month or two months, I need to be organized and be able to get back into it very quickly so I'm not wasting time looking for information. Now, one of the tools, if you've been following along with this channel, that I love to use are spreadsheets. Spreadsheets are a wonderful tool for visualizing data. Uh, in this case, one of my go-tos for graphing out uh, data that I collect uh, as I'm testing something with either the Pico or any of the Raspberry Pis or whatever programming I'm working on. And then if I graph it out, it tells me a visual story faster than I can go through and look at all these numbers to see what they're telling me. So, in truth, this is one of my favorite tools, especially on this project where I, I'm looking at motion over time. And so you really need to see things two-dimensionally in a quick representation to understand what the little robotic car is doing. But more recently, uh, I started using, uh, I've always used uh, Google Docs, I think was the original name for it. Now it might be called Google sheets or something. I think they changed the name. I forget. But nonetheless, um, the, uh, the Google uh, Docs, I'm going to refer to it as, has been around for a while and it's ever evolving. And uh, when I uh, just switched uh, into a complete rewrite of uh, the control software for the robot, uh, for this little guy, um, a lot changed on it, and uh, I needed to really kind of keep track of what I'm changing and why and what I need to tend to. So I go to Google Docs for that because then I can look at it uh, in my actual office down here in the laboratory, out in the other workshop, or wherever in the world I may be. And uh, you just get access uh, everywhere to it. So this is uh, my journal that I usually keep. Uh, in this case, it's actually formatted up a little bit nicer. And uh, I keep track of very important things at the top of it. And this is sort of like a daily journal of what I did on what day, what the focus of what my task was. And then sometimes I actually keep track of the time duration I worked on it because that information can be important uh, in other ways, such as I want to determine how long the batteries in the little robotic car are lasting. Well, this helps me keep track of that. But this goes on. I try to do this every single day that I'm working on the project, whether it be for a half hour or an entire day. 
Uh, so this goes on. Currently there's 27 pages in the journal, but that's only just kind of a daily log of what's going on. And uh, Google came out with, I think this rather recently, called Tabs. And over here on the left hand side you'll see some little thing like that, a little icon. If I click on it, these are all my tabs for this project and this document. And what that allowed me to do was categorize information in a very organized way. And uh, for it fits really well with the style uh, and methodology in which I got to approach a project like this because it's involving hardware design, software design, electronic design, all different things at all different stages of development. And it's very easy to lose track of what's what. So this started out with my first tab as the journal. And then I needed a place where I started to uh, jot down ideas, uh, whether it's when I first crawl out of bed in the morning and I'm at the other computer and I start thinking about ideas, I go to my noodle board is what I call it. You're noodling on an idea, right? And this noodle board uh, is just where I would type out what I think is an idea or a concept that has merit. A lot of it's very uh, crude general information, but it, it preserves that thought that I have at that time. So that was the noodle board, and that really has been a great place to jot down ideas, make sketches, etc., put them there, and uh, revisit them uh, at the appropriate time. Then as the program started to develop, um, I needed to keep track of some technical data. And uh, with the Zoomy, the little robot car, moving around on the, the experimental arena over there, uh, there's different specifications that I need to keep track of, positional data. And that's where this became handy. Uh, the handy technical information is where I would just dump in all sorts of uh, technical data, reference information that's very useful at various times throughout program development. As the program uh, developed for this particular project, it's all about motion control. Realistically, the Zumi control program, the software in the little robot, is, a func is a, essentially functioning as a motion control program to allow the Zumi to maneuver through a city. And uh, as such, I'm creating a programming language per se. So uh, in order to keep track of that as it's being created or even modified along the way, I created a tab for trip instructions, uh, what the actual programming language looks like. So it lists all the different commands that it uses, goes through, defines what they do, and uh, different aspects of the uh, device it's using, different sensors, different motors, etc and uh, uh, examples that are allowable, and so on. So all that data is documented here on trip instructions. Along the same lines, there are certain procedures that I'll need uh, to perform in the future with this system. And uh, I call this, this particular one as calibration. I need to calibrate how fast the wheels spin uh, when they're told to go at the same speed. Uh, these little DC motors, etc., they don't run at perfect speed, so I might be giving it uh, the exact same PWM signal strength, but one wheel is going to go faster than the other. So there's a calibration process for that. Of course, if I try to keep that in memory in, in two days, that's gone. So another tab to keep track of that information. The uh, one down here, this one, System Performance Review. This was actually done before I rerouted. I evaluated every aspect of performance of the Zumi. This is what, what we had working, but it had strengths and weaknesses. So from that, I can look at it and go, well, if that was working really good, don't mess with it. If that was working really bad or okay, 
let's let's readdress it. Let's look for an alternative means of dealing with that problem. So I refer that refer to this quite a bit, especially right now at the phase I'm in, where I'm testing out all the new motion control routines uh, to get the Zoomity to do to do different things. So it's got all the data about each sensor, whether it's good, bad, or indifferent, why little bits and pieces of information through observations. One of the areas that I am gener have been generally good about over the years is remembering the things that I didn't finish doing. And uh, unfortunately, the older I get, the harder that is. And uh, so I've got a very important tab called Stuff to Do, Don't Forget. And everything that I'm leaving open-ended uh, goes into this tab. So I can check it every couple of days and go, okay, is that something I want to address today? Or put it off a little bit later. But for anything undone, it's listed right here in a very handy place so I can observe it and deal with it. Within the stuff to do thing, I might even reference other areas that contain more data about what it is I have to do. You'll notice these two items right here. This is, I'll zoom that up a little bit so you get to be able to see it better. This is talking about a new body design and a new chassis design. I have to modify this to accommodate new sensors that have been added. So in this area here, this component has to be redesigned and then the whole body that goes on top of it has to be redesigned. And there's very specific reasons for that. Well, I don't go into detail on my to-do list, just a hint as to what's got to go on, but I do have a hardware changes, and that is the purpose of this page. Up here, I'm talking about uh, reverse steering control is the functionality. I need to do some design and reprinting, meaning 3D printing, and uh, that takes a whole different mindset than programming and testing and everything else that I'm working on here. It also requires a new printed circuit board. Well, that's again electrical engineering, slightly different mindset than programming, uh, but then I have to either manufacture or have manufactured the little circuit boards that'll work as the interface needed for this new sensor device. Uh, also, uh, because I'm implementing another sensor, I need to change the design of the uh, body that slips over the top of the Zoomy. And again, mechanical design, kind of a little more fun on the creative side. In this particular case, I still want to try to be fun and creative with it, but I've got a heck of a mechanical challenge to overcome, going from a single pace body to a probable two piece body that's held together with magnets, rubber bands, screws. I'm just not sure yet how we'll approach that one. Overall, these are very simple tools, right? I mean, a spreadsheet, we've, if you've been in computers for a number of years, you've probably been using them for uh, roughly about 45 years, 40 years, somewhere in there, uh, and a word processor uh, you've been using for a long time. But for me, using these tools in this way helped me to tremendously improve my efficiency and my ability to go away and come back to a project and pick up pretty quickly just by reviewing a few notes. Nothing major here as far as a programming tool, but overall for a project management tool that isn't the old fashioned or use, useful stuff that we all do in our businesses with the uh, uh, project manager who's going to give you a timeline and a herringbone chart and a Gantt chart and some notes as to status. This is a lot more to do with management of everything involved in it. Obviously, I'm not running on a schedule here. I'm just going as fast as I can. Otherwise, I would have some of that stuff in here as well. Well, anyhow, I hope you found value in this video. Hopefully it sparks some ideas how you can be more efficient with your projects and keep track of things a little bit nicer. Thanks for watching, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next video.